Hello again everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at two of the main pieces inside of PLSQL. Those are called named and anonymous blocks. So I'm going to write some PLSQL code. The two basic choices I have is to write what's called a named block or an anonymous block. And what is the difference between these two? A named block is one that's going to be stored inside the database. So it's something that I'm going to use over and over again. An anonymous block is something that I'm probably just going to run one time. It doesn't actually get stored in the database. It gets run as PLSQL uh, inside the Oracle database, but it doesn't actually get stored there. So if I want to run it a second time, I have to you know, call it from a text file that I've saved locally on my computer or something like that. Whereas if I create a named block, it's actually stored inside the database that I can use over and over again. So we're going to take a look at some of these right now. In terms of our named blocks, there's two main, two main uh, types of named blocks that are out there. One is called a function. is called a procedure. The difference between these two is that a function always returns a value. A procedure doesn't explicitly return a value. I can pass parameters to a procedure that get modified and then are returned back to uh, the program that's actually calling this procedure, but uh, that's not a prerequisite of a procedure. So name blocks can be broken into two basic types, functions and procedures. And we're going to have videos that take a look at each one of these in depth. But this video is really focusing on the two different types of blocks that are out there, named and anonymous blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into uh, SQL Developer and I'm going to create a function a real simple function that I'm going to name inside my database and then I'm going to use an anonymous block to actually call that function and return a value. So let's hop into SQL Developer now and if you're familiar with the other videos I've created you know that I use I like using SQL Developer a lot. These are all the different things that I can create uh, as part of my login as um, going into SQL Developer. So I've logged in here as the sys user and you can see here's all the different objects that are available to me. Tables, views, ed additioning views, indexes, packages, all these different types of things. And you can see that I have um, procedures and functions uh, here as part of the different objects that I can create inside my database. So I'm going to create a real simple function. If I click on the plus sign, you can see I have all of these existing functions as the sys user in my 11G release 2 database. I'm going to go ahead and create another function. So if I right click on function, then create new function, and this wizard will create the outline for me. It doesn't create the whole function, but it'll create the outline for me. It'll give me the ability to go in there and uh, make changes to my function relatively easily. So I'm going to create this function, and I'm going to call it cubed. And it's a real simple function. What it's going to do, it's going to take a parameter, and whatever number I pass into that, it's going to return the cubed value. So if I input uh, the number 2, it will return an 8. If I put in 3, it will return a 27. So here's all the parameters that are going to go into it. Here's what the DBL statement looks like. I click on OK. It doesn't actually create the function for me, but it creates the outline of the function for me. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to pass in a parameter. And where do I pass in the parameter? I pass it after the function name. So I'm going to call this number underscore in. And I put the in at the end to signify that it's an input per, uh, variable for this function. I have to specify if it's a, an input or an output or a both. I'm going to use the word in to signify that it's an input variable. And then I have to specify what it actually is. So I'm going to say integer. So create or replace function cube. There's my input parameter. What am I actually going to return? I can do a whole bunch of stuff here between the begin and the end statement. But the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to return number in times number 
n times number n, right? Nothing fancy. So if I put in a 2, it'll return 2 times 2 times 2. If I put in 3, it'll return 3 times 3 times 3. So if I've done everything correctly, which I think I have, I can say compile. Oracle went ahead and compiled. So now I have this cubed function inside my database. So this is an example of a named PLSQL block. I named it, I gave it a, a function name, I stored it in the database, and it's available for me to call over and over again. It's now part of my database. An anonymous block is, again, one where I don't actually store the information inside the database. It's good for running PLSQL statements that you only have to run, let's say, one time. So let's say I want to call this cubed function. I can call it as part of a SQL statement, right? How do I do that? Well, I can say something like select cubed, and here's the parameter I'm going to pass, and I'm going to pass in a 3 from, and there's this pseudo column called dual, which is um, just a, a pseudo table, excuse me, inside your database called dual, which isn't a physical one, but it's one that's kind of used as like a scratch area when you're, you're doing um, different types of functions. So I can call it from here. So let me run this, select cube from, from dual. So you can see I passed in a 3, I got 27 back. If I pass in a 4, comes back with 64. So I could call this function from a SQL statement. But let's say I want to write an anonymous PLSQL block uh, to call this uh, function, this cubed function. Uh, but it's again, it's not something I'm going to want to use over and over again. So I can create this anonymous PLSQL block that will uh, execute some PLSQL for me. Uh, that I, uh, like I said, I, it won't store it in the database. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to use the begin and end statements. And I'm going to put stuff in between these begin and end statements, right? So what do I want to do? Well, I want to call the sys.cubed function, right? So I know I want to call that. I want to call sys.cubed and let's say I want to pass in a 4. But I can't just call it like that, right? As part of a PLSQL uh, anonymous block, since we're calling a function, we know it's always going to return a value. So I have to pass this into some kind of variable, right? I can't just call it like this. Oracle's not going to know what the heck to do to this thing. So I'm going to say the variable x is equal to sys cubed. So what do I have to do? I also have to declare what x is. Is x a number? Is it a character? Is it a varchar? What the heck is it? So before my begin statement, I have to say declare x is a number. Indent this so it's a little easier to read. OK, so now I have the variable x, which is going to hold the value of what I'm calling, but what do I want to do with it? Do I want to print it? Do I want to store it? What do I want to do with it? I want to do something with x, so I'm going to call this internal procedure called dbms output, and there's an overloaded function in that uh, PLSQL package, dbms output, called put line, and put line is going to output whatever I pass into it. So I'm going to say the cube of 4 is, I close my quotes, and then I'm going to append onto it the variable x. So now I have this anonymous PLSQL block that declares x as a number, the variable x is a number. The x is then going to be assigned the value that um, is going to call this function called cubed. I'm going to pass it the value 4. So this is going to return 64, hopefully. It'll pass it into that variable x. And on the next line, I'm going to use dbms output, which is a package in the database, and put line, which is an overloaded um, pr uh, procedure inside that package. And it's going to output this information. So everything in single quotes. Oops, I need single quotes there. The cube of 4 is. And then I'm going to append. I use the two um, vertical bars to append the information to that, and I'm going to append the variable x, which should be 64 as I run this. So if I go back here and I say, okay, run this guy as a script, yep, got compilation error, which is always interesting. What did I do wrong there? Uh 
Oh, it's real easy. I forgot to put a semicolon at the end. So let's put a semicolon at the end of that. Run this as a script again. So when I go ahead and now run this entire block, I get anonymous block completed. Well, it didn't print anything out. There's something that you have to do in order to get output. So let's put server output on. And we'll do this one more time. We'll run the whole script. And now you can see the queue before is 64. So again, if I pass a different value into this, let's pass in 5. Let's say the cube of 5 is that. We'll run this whole thing again. And now you see the cube of 5 is 125. So this is an example of the two basic types of code blocks that you can have inside of PLSQL. A named block is where you actually give the uh, procedure or function that you're talking about an actual name and you store it inside the database. And this is obviously what you're going to do 99% of the time. You want to have pieces of code that you can call over and over again. You can also make use of anonymous PLSQL blocks, which do not get stored inside the database, but execute PLSQL functions, or uh, uh, PLSQL code, I should say. And these are really good for things that you have to just run one time or you have to run very rarely. You don't need to store it inside the database. But this video should give you a pretty good overview of the different types of blocks that we have. In other videos, we're going to take a look at the specific different types, um, PLSQL functions, PLSQL procedures, and then a way of grouping PLSQL functions and procedures together into what's called a package.